All right, we are back from outer space. And Albie has that sad look upon his face. Okay, I thought I'd change the lock. Whatever it was, anyway. Uh, 1977, Gloria Gaynor. You ever hear that song? Old song. Old disco. All right. Saw her in concert in Madrid, Spain in 1986. <coughs> Springtime. Long time ago. Okay, so instead of writing this on the board, clear? Instead of writing this on the board, I'll, you feed me and I will remind you what it is. Is that good? Again? Okay. So, what do we got for Democritus? Greek? Yes, what do we got? Romina, quickly, come on, let's go. Hit it. Greek philosopher. Greek philosopher. <coughs> he is famous for his atomic theory. Yeah, atomic theory, but be careful. It, it, it wasn't exactly, when you say atomic theory, I'm thinking John Dalton, you know, modern atomic theory. His big idea was, yeah, the atom, the Greek word atomos, indivisible. Right? Democritus, I mean, said that matter was made up of small particles that were indivisible. Now, he didn't tell you what was in those smaller particles, but he, he knew that matter could be broken down into something really tiny that was indivisible. And that's true. An atom is the smallest unit, smallest unit of an element that retains the properties of that element. That's actually the definition of an atom today. So it's pretty close to what Democritus said. As long as they don't start doing anything weird like talking about nucleus and atomic weight, atomic number, electrons, yeah. This is what Democritus said, that the smallest unit of matter was a small little particle that was indivisible. What we say is that the smallest unit of matter that can be broken down is called an atom. Same thing as what he said. Yes? So the smallest unit of an element is an individual atom of that element. All right, good. So that is Democritus. Uh, Frogma, any, anything you want to add to that? Anything good? You got, a, you got, a, you got an approximate year? What do we got? <coughs> you got a year on that? No, no year? Romina, you got a year? 400 BC, do you think? No, no, it's alright. was born in I think it was a little bit more like. Can you, can you, we'll come back to you. Can you look up a year so we can push on? Okay. Uh, Ernest Rutherford. You want me to tell you about Ernest Rutherford? Who's doing her Ernie? Anybody doing Ernie? Yeah, you're doing Ernie? Ernest Rutherford. Bert and Ernie. Ah, uh, hey Bert. Anybody? Who's doing, wait a second. R, who's R? Okay, oh, you're looking up the Democritus thing, okay. So let's skip down then to J. Dalton. John Dalton was age of 22, 23. He ran a school with his brother. He, uh, he did, I almost didn't go to college, did he? He was what they call a um, meteorologist. Now they call him a dissenter because he didn't want to belong to the Church of England. He didn't want to sign the loyalty oath, and he was called a dissenter. He went to a university in Manchester, I believe, a college in Manchester. But anyway, what do we know about John Dalton? Who's Dalton? M. Who's M? Malaysia, Canada, what do we got? He was a scientist. He was a he was a scientist, a chemist. And the what? Meteorologist. That's right. He was a meteorologist. He studied weather. Meteorologist. Is that what you got? Any idea about Dalton's atomic theory? When we think of the first real, honest-to-goodness, atomic theory, you know, apart from 
atomic structure. I'm not talking about atomic structure, I'm talking about atomic theory. We think of John Dalton, don't we? Dalton's laws of partial pressure. Yeah, that, you know what that is? Yeah. What, what that is is simply this, that a gas, chlorine, is next to oxygen. They don't know that each other's different. They think they're all the same. There's really, in, in terms of physical, there's no difference between chlorine gas and oxygen gas, physically. Oh yeah, it smells and wants to kill you, etc. But what is the volume at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere of 6.02 times 10 to, the, 10 to the 23rd particles of oxygen gas? What's the volume? How do you have to help you know that? 22.4 liters. What is the volume of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of fluorine gas? 22.4 liters, same? If I take an equal number of particles of any gas at the same temperature and pressure, they're all going to have the same volume. And if I take, so if I have, if I have, if I have a container, and that container is at a specific set of conditions, the pressure inside that container is simply the addition of the pressure of each gas that's in there. So if I have chlorine, oxygen, nitrogen, right? if I have four or five gases, I simply add up the pressures of each individual gas, and that's the law of partial pressures. What else was Dalton known for? Daltonism. Anybody have Daltonism in here? Anybody? Daltonism? Anybody have Daltonism? Nobody? Color blindness. Yeah. Color blindness. Dalton was responsible for a lot of groundbreaking research on color blindness. And color blindness, I don't know if it's all color blindness actually or is it all color blindness? Red green color blindness is Daltonism. Red green, we heard it right here first from Panda. Red green color blindness is Daltonism. So, does anybody want to tell me what his basic philosophy, what his idea and understanding of atomic theory was? Give me three or four points. So, do you, you have anything there for us? What do we got? He was, he was the first scientist to explain the behavior of atoms. I like that. In terms of the in terms of the measurement of weight. Okay, anybody else? We'll come back to him too. We're gonna to have to make this a two day affair. Okay, because we wanna get all these guys up on the board. So we'll come back to Dalton. Uh, can we talk about Rutherford? Shall I help you? <clears throat> Rutherford could be one of the first big guys when it comes to atomic structure. He, give me a date on Rutherford too. Give me, a, give me an approximate date. Rutherford took alpha particles. You know what an alpha particle is, anybody? An alpha particle is, anybody? An alpha particle is, no? All right, an alpha particle is this. The charged particle. It's a helium nucleus. A helium nucleus, no electrons. So it's very small. <laughs> okay, it's very small. And he 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 found a way to make a gun out of these nuclei. And he fired them very fast at very thin gold foil. It's called the gold foil experiment. And most of the Helium nuclei passed right through the gold foil and hit a screen on the other side. And he found that, whoa, wait a second, that heavy gold, that dense gold was mostly empty space. Remember we talked about that yesterday? I hit my head on this book. It's mostly, I'm hitting my head with electrons. If this were pure nuclear material, it would probably be microscopic. 
the number, the, 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 all the nuclei in this book would be microscopic. What gives this volume is electrons. So when you hit your head, you're hitting your head with electrons. So you fall and you hit your head, you go home and you tell your mom, Mom, you're never going to guess what happened today. Oh. I hit my head against electrons. And it was not pretty. Okay, got a headache, Sir. got a concussion. Sir, he demonstrated induced nuclear transmutation. Okay, let's, yeah, easy for you to say. Let's hold off on that. That's a little too advanced right now. What did you say? Induced? Nuclear transmutation. Induced nuclear transmutation. That was Rutherford. That's what they said. Okay, well, we'll hold off on that for a minute. Let me tell my story. We played the University of Manchester. University of Manchester. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then we're going to leave. What, what did I do? Is there a free lunch somewhere? What? Did I say something? Can I just finish my story really quickly? So, but every once in a while, this, 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 this beam of alpha particles would hit something solid and it would bounce back or, or, or ricochet. And so he's like, whoa, what was that? And in terms of momentum, in terms of momentum, you know what it was like? It was like, and this was his, I'm paraphrasing, it was like, it was like taking a giant cannon, firing it directly at toilet paper, directly at toilet paper, here, here you go, toilet paper. I'm gonna fire a cannon at this, boom! And you know what happened? That cannonball hit the toilet paper, bounced back, and killed me. What? From the cannon? Yeah! That was the same thing in terms of momentum and forces and masses and speeds and velocities and all that. It was similar. That's how amazing it was to take that, to take that alpha particle and hit this, hit the gold foil and have the alpha particle bounce back. No, 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 no. No. The, having that missile bounce off the toilet paper <coughs> was the same as, similar to, equivalent to, analogous to, not equal to, the alpha particle hitting something so solid and bouncing back because it had so much momentum that alpha particle was moving extremely fast. He was stunned. So this is what he said. He said, this is what Rutherford came up with. Rutherford said, wait a second. We'll talk about the plum pudding model. <laughs> he said that an atom was mostly empty space and had a hard core, something in the center that was very small, extremely dense, extremely hard, extremely stable. And that was big. Very, very big. Got it? Go.